only got a few ones left and this next one I'm super excited about because these are scary, scary looking heavyweights, man. It's okay. Ben Rothwell and Marcin Jura. Okay, so let's even just take a quick second to get pumped up for the next three fights, okay? This is where this is where we graduate from that concept of, oh, we're just taking in anybody who can fight, right? Like we got six guys right now that are competitive, maybe not title challengers per se, but these are the guys we like to watch fight. And so if we were like the prelim guys and really sniping, like we're now into the main video, yeah? Yeah, uh, for the, yeah. So the first one I want to get into right now is my boy, Big Ben. Love the guy from a personality perspective, long-term fan perspective, all of those things. Like that's what we've really been. He's been around the block. Right? Mm-hmm. And I know, and I know you've seen him fight. We've actually been on him and been successful. It was the uh, old Vincent Proof fight where we actually took him, okay. and he actually won that via split decision. And, and for me, the thing I like about him is just how long he's been at it, and, and the people he's fought. It's just been such a long and impressive career at heavyweight. And I think he's really mm-hmm. believing now that he's at a point where competition might not be so bad. He's learning more. He's taking things yeah. more seriously, like his diet and his nutrition and all that fun stuff. And so I think the Big Ben we're seeing right now is the Big Ben that we all want to see. Now, from an odds perspective, I think Tigura, who is, you know, I think he's a little uneventful based on what I thought he was going to do when he first came in. Similar similar thing, right? Loses to the big names. And, and that's why I don't want to take anything away from For Doom, Lewis, Abdurakimov, Sakai. Like, these are all oh, wow. things that... You know, pretty much, mm-hmm. these are all top 10, top 15 guys. So, so, so he is a top 15 heavyweight in the UFC, but unfortunately, never been able to really get close to that title. So this is a good matchup for both guys who are trying to get into that mix. Right now, it's so wide open, right? Some guys want to retire, some guys are staying. Once this all clears up with the Naganus and the Joneses and the Miocic's, the UFC is going to need guys to, to start filling yes. in those, those gaps, right? And so yes. right now, we have a fight that's really going to dictate that. And the only thing I want to say left on is just, Tybura is a little irresponsible in there. I think he likes to throw a lot more than he should. He's kind of slow okay. against the more technical fighters, and that's the problem in, in, in heavyweight fighting because technical strikers still have power and so you have to take that into consideration and big ben this is like the fight you expect him to win this is a fight where i expect him to be like a minus or sorry a plus 150 underdog it's a fight where he knows that he's going to be that kind of dog where he has to go in and just withstand that first like three to four minutes of that real flurry and then just get technical dance around the octagon a little bit pepper him a little bit like use that uh, a little bit Mm -hmm. i think he he has that grappling in in the ground to at least try to avoid any of that type of funny stuff from from Marcin Debra. So I'm really hoping we can catch him at that plus 150 uh, underdog rate. I could be wrong, but I really do see him being the Yeah, it, it, it seems like Vegas yeah, agrees with you in terms of this domination because he's actually a minus 200 favorite. Oh, wow. That saddens me, man. You know why? Because I just, <laughs> knowing Big Ben, I'm just hoping that that doesn't, not that it's going to play into him, but it's just like those fights where just looking back on his career, it's like you said, the the fights that you expect him to win, you know, oh, kind of struggles. Never a bride, right? And so I just hope yeah. for his sake, like this is one that you know he takes seriously. He analyzes the fight tapes well. I, I really do think he has a chance from a technical striking standpoint, especially if it goes to rounds two and three. Don't get antsy in that first round. You know, let Tybura get a little tired. He's a bigger boy. Just just let that happen, and then find your way to make the make the W happen. Mm-hmm. And do you see a finish happening here? So here's the thing with that, right? I, I do believe that both men have that opportunity, but it's one of those things where if both guys get knocked out once and recover, I just think they're both going to be too tired from anything. Yeah, to to throw another, yeah, for sure. Because they both, have, like, they're going to have chins, you know? Like, that's the whole thing yeah. about these guys. Um, from, because of how tired they'll be. Like, they'll be so used to taking each other's punches by that second, third round that it's just so rare to just see that land unless it's like ground and pound or a really good shot when the guy's hands are too low or he's just yeah. filthy exhausted. And that's another point to make, right? I don't see these two guys being the types of heavyweights that get like embarrassingly exhausted. You're not mm-hmm. gonna see a, a, a data 5,000 and uh, a Kimbo <laughs> slice fight here, you know? Like that's, that's, yeah, for that, sure. that's a little like past tense, but now I think you're going to see a bit more athleticism there, but like, let's see how that plays out.